Hello and welcome to this series of instructional videos on Ecosim Building Designer V8i. And in this session we'll be taking our conceptual model that we did in a previous session and we're going to start imbuing and embellishing it with more design information in a way that we're collaborating with other members of our design team and that will assist us going forward to our construction documents and our documents of record. So let's start by taking a look at Floor Selector which is docked down here at the bottom of your screen. If you click on the first jump box of Floor Selector to set active floor, you'll notice we have a low-rise building with four floors and a roof. And to use Floor Selector, all you need to do is double-click on one of the settings there, and now anything you model will be placed directly and automatically on that plane, so you have no worries about whereabouts you're modeling. With that, we're going to come to our task space menu, we're going to click on our architectural design tab, we're going to choose the first icon of the first row called Create Space. The Create Space dialog box opens and we need two settings to begin with. The first is Flood Area to Create Space and the one next to it Draw Rectangle. Underneath that you'll see Space Type and if you click on that jump box you'll see that we have a number of options here. The one we need is Project Tenant Retail. With that, you'll see that we have an enormous amount of information that we can collaborate and communicate with and to our facilities management team. The one we need to really need to check on is this one called Number. This corresponds to our floors in this project. And we've set it to Floor 01, and after that, it will just then go up incrementally. Below that, make sure your label placement is dynamic, your flood options are associate flood spaces and allow holes larger than one foot. After that, come to your top view and click once inside your conceptual model view. You can see the building designer is intelligent enough to know the extents of your concept modeling and with that it's asking you is this where you wish to place this space. We click once with our left mouse button and right button to reset and you can see in our isometric we have now positioned the space. Let's use floor selector to go up to floor 2 by double clicking on it and we're going to come to our space type and create space and change it to project tenant office. With that, we're going to click again in our conceptual model, click left-click once more, right-click to accept, and we'll go up to the third floor and place another office floor. Our fourth floor, when we go to Floor Selector, if we double-click on that, we're going to make sure we change this from Project Tenant Office to Project Tenant Condo. And with that, we click once, select it, and then we right-click to accept. And now we have our low-rise structure with three defined usage areas, retail, two office floors, and a condominium floor. But it's not only that, because Building Designer is a building information modeler, and the advantage of doing that is to keep track of all the information anytime at your fingertips. We're going to come down to our Data tab on our task-based interface, and we're going to check the fourth icon in on the first row called Data Group Explorer. Data Group Explorer opens, and in the left-hand field you'll see a series of headings. The first one is Catalog Types, and underneath that is Space. Twirl down on the spaces and select the space program. And Data Group Explorer immediately reports to you on the floors, their actual areas, and their ceiling heights. And if we select Floor 1, you'll notice it highlights in our model, as does any of the other floors when we click on them. But more importantly in this case, you'll see that our actual area is 11,200 square feet. If we're to go back to our task base interface and select Solid Modeling, our fourth row down, second icon in, we're going to do some push-pull model editing. We've got a change order. We're going to come to this bowed frontage, we're going to select it, and then we're going to click left, click again to accept it, and we're going to pull this frontage out to make it larger. And with that, Data Group Explorer goes away and recalculates the floor areas. We're going to come down to the side here, elevation, and we're going to select this face, click it to say yes to accept it, and we're going to add a bit of girth to our first floor. And again, and again Data Group Explorer goes away and recalculates it so that from 11,200, we're now at 15,016 square feet. Simply the power of using a building information modeling tool and building designer. We also have those classic tools as well of Control Z, where we can undo actions. And in building designer, we can undo unlimited undos as long as our session is open. We're going to come to our next part. We're going to start creating our first document of record. And to do that, we're going to come to our task base interface, go to Views and Sheets tab. We're going to select the third row down, first icon, Create Floor Plan Views. Our Create Plan dialog box opens, and we're going to select the third icon, Floor Plan by Floor Set. This now changes our Create Plans to a Create Floor Plan by Floor Selector. In our Drawing Seed, we're going to choose our Arch Floor Plan, 
And you can see there we have a source that we can choose from. In this case, it's built-in designer. But we could choose from any iModel compatible format, such as IFC or even Revit. With that, we're going to twirl down building floors and the low-rise building. And here, we're going to select floor 1, 2, and 4 are the ones we want to create our plans from. With that, we can click the Next button. And we can get a summary of our information. And we click Create. Create Drawing starts up. And we see it's floor 1 is going to be a label. We're going to create the drawing model so it's checked. We're going to change the scale of this one to 1 16th of an inch is 1 foot. We're also going to create a sheet model with this, and then we're going to click OK. Floor 2 arrives in the Create Drawing dialog. We're going to create that drawing. Remember, we're going to change it to 16th of an inch to 1 foot. But this time, we're going to uncheck Create Sheet Model. We're going to click OK. We're going to do the same in Floor 4. And now we have created three floor plans dynamically. We're going to click Cancel here. You can see in our model, in our elevation, that we have one of the floors isolated, the floor plan of the cut. But if you look in our top view, you can see that we have these new markers either side of where floors are. We're going to choose this one, place call out for floor one. And as soon as you select it, a jump box appears to the side of it. We're going to click the far right icon, which opens that particular floor plan. Building Designer opens that floor plan for you. And this is floor plan one. Not only does it do that, but if you come up to the view navigation bar at the top of every single one of the eight views in Building Designer and check the fit view, you will see it's placed it automatically on a sheet. We're going to move this. To do so, we're going to right click over the actual floor plan. We're going to highlight it and click on it. And we're going to move up here to move reference. And with that, we're going to click on that, move it down to this corner here. And not only does the floor plan move, but also the marker that goes with it. We're going to place our second and fourth floors alongside of this. And the most efficient way of doing this is to use something called Project Explorer. To do this, you go up to your primary taskbar, and you'll see there's a, an icon called Project Explorer. If you click on that, you'll see it appears to the left-hand side of your task base interface. Pass your cursor over it, and click on the Links tab. And below that, on the jump box, select the Building Arch Local, and then twirl down Drawings and All Drawings. And you'll see that we have floor 1, 2, and 4. We're going to place floor 2 by right-clicking and placing model. Our reference attachment opens up. We're going to select top. We're going to choose nesting. We're going to choose live nesting. And we're going to create a drawing title. And we're going to call this typical office floor. And we're going to click OK. Now we can come in here, and we can just click once to place that with its call out. We're going to go back to Project Explorer, right-click on floor 4, place model and go through the same exercise. But remember, our floor on this is actually condominiums, not office space. So remember, if you, when you click the drawing title, to put typical condo floor in, and then click OK. I'm going to come in here, place that condo floor there. Our next stage is to place some sections or elevations. We're going to come up to our task base interface under Views and Sheets, come to our third row across, and place section callout. The Place Section Callout dialog box opens. We're going to click on the Drawing Seed and choose Arch Building Section. You can see our height can be chosen from View, Model, or User Defined. We're going to choose Model, and our Create Drawing is checked. We're going to start here on the right-hand side. And using AccuDraw and AccuSnap, it's aiding us in giving us a nice true line across our plan to give us a great section. Click on the other side, and with that, you can then draw your mouse up. And you can see the sight line of how much information is going to be taken in with this section. We click once, our Create Drawing dialog box opens up. We're going to call it Section A. We're going to create a drawing model. It's going to be 1 16th of an inch, but we're not going to create that sheet model. So we uncheck that and click OK. We're going to do the same with our office floor, but this time we're going to go vertical here. Again, AccuDraw and AccuSnap helping us out. We're going to pull out right through the front of the building as we know it. We're going to call it Section B. We're going to create the drawing. Remember to change it to 1 16th of an inch to 1 foot, and uncheck Create Sheet Model, and then click OK. The great thing about placing these dynamic views, these sections elevations, is that they are literally dynamic, so that you can grab hold of any of these icons or handles, and you can dictate just how much information you're going to see. Not only that, but if you pass your cursor and select the actual section line, you'll see that there's an arrow here. We can right click on that. And you can see that we can flip the direction very efficiently of our section. If we take that back, we can now start creating the drawings coming off these. And to do that, all we need to do is to select the section and right-click. With that, we can say, 
come up here and say place drawing. Our reference attachment opens, it's section A, it's top, we have live nesting, and our drawing title is checked with create, and we're going to populate that with section A. We're going to click OK, we're going to come up here and place that. We're going to do the same with the floor two, place drawing, and there we have our three floor plans and two sections. We can actually alter the way these are displayed, and it's very, very easy to do that because all we need to do is come up to our settings pull down, we come down to our display styles, in case this is a presentation drawing, and in which case we just need to alter the way it's displayed. So we're going to check on forward drawing, and with that we're going to come to the right hand side under render mode and display, and we're going to click on and choose shaded. With that we can close that down. We may need to refresh, and that's up in our view navigation bar, update view and straight away we have a more compelling presentation drawing. But it doesn't end just there, because now we can take the data, the information that we imbued into our conceptual model and start reporting on it in our presentation drawing. How? Using something called data group annotation. Let's come to our annotation tab in our task base interface. We need to come down, we need to come down seven rows and our last icon there, place data group annotation, and with that we just need to click the outside edge of one of these shapes here, and we have attached to this something that will report on the data group information. In this case, it says label and area, and when we select that and we place it, it goes out and it reports on the usage of that area and its square footage. We can do this for any of them here, place it wherever we want. We can come down to our office, as well as to our condominium floor. And we can place those labels next to our floor plan. We can even go so far as to coming into our sections and actually placing the floor usage and the square footage in a section view as well. So here we have the ability to create intelligent mass modeling, the space areas within them, and to take that conceptual modeling with those spaces and bring them forward into our construction drawing session of our design project to be able to collaborate with other members of our design project team and to show just how the information that you have imbued your model with is at your fingertips to take advantage of. And that is the creation of intelligent flaws in Ecosim Building Designer V8i.